The shape of the signal can also be important, especially when you're talking about alcohol. So here I have a generic alcohol, and we're concerned, uh, we're concerned about the bond between the oxygen and the hydrogen. We know oxygen is more electronegative, so this oxygen here gets a partial negative, and this hydrogen here gets a partial positive. Same thing for this alcohol over here. Right? That sets up the opportunity for hydrogen bonding. So this partially positive hydrogen can be attracted to this partially negative oxygen here. And this attractive force, right? if this hydrogen is being attracted, that's going to weaken this oxygen-hydrogen bond. So hydrogen bonding weakens the oxygen-hydrogen bond. And we know if we're weakening the strength of a bond, that's like decreasing the force constant or decreasing the spring constant. And we saw in an earlier video, if you decrease K, you're going to decrease the frequency or decrease the wave number. And so the signal is going to change on, on your IR spectrum. And so at any moment in time, different alcohol molecules are going to have different amounts of hydrogen bonding. And so some molecules might have a little bit of hydrogen bonding. So K decreases a little bit, and the wave number decreases a little bit. But other molecules might have a lot of hydrogen bonding. And so we could decrease K even more. And so therefore, we're going to decrease the wave number even more. And so you get a range, you get a range of wave numbers. And since you get a range of wave numbers for the OH bond when hydrogen bonding is present, you get a very broad signal on your IR spectrum. So if we go over here in this region, so we're talking about the IR spectrum for one hexanol, this is the, this is the region for, uh, for bonds to hydrogen. Right? So we draw a line at, at 3,000 here. And we know that just below 3,000, right, we're talking in, in, in this area, we're talking about a carbon-hydrogen bond stretch where the carbon is sp3 hybridized. But this over here, right, this very broad signal right here, this is due to the OH. So let me go ahead and highlight that. So this bond right here, this oxygen-hydrogen bond, gives us a very broad signal on our IR spectrum because it's because of hydrogen bonding, right? So we get this very broad signal here because of the different the different wave numbers. And usually you're gonna see this somewhere around 3,500 to 2,900. So if I find this is 31, 32, 33, 34, 35. So usually in this range, maybe even a little bit higher than that, you're, you're gonna find this very broad signal, in this case, uh, the oxygen-hydrogen bond. And so you know immediately to think about the possibility of an alcohol functional group in your molecule. All right, so also we can draw a line at, at 1500 here. And, and this signal actually, so somewhere around 1100 wave numbers, this is actually the carbon oxygen single bond. So let me go ahead and highlight that. So we have a carbon oxygen single bond, and this is the single bond region in here. And, and that's where, that's this stretch right here. So not always, not always gonna be super useful to you, but it's just thinking about what we talked about in the in the earlier video. I think we calculated the approximate wave number for a carbon oxygen single bond. And so that's what, that, that's what the typical spectrum for an alcohol is gonna look like. Look for that broad signal there. All right, let's, uh, let's compare this alcohol to, uh, to another one here. So this molecule, this molecule is uh, butylated hydroxytoluene or BHT. And I drew two BHT molecules in there for a reason. Um, and let's, let's think about why. So you might think at first, oh, okay, I have another opportunity for hydrogen bonding, right? So here's an opportunity for hydrogen bonding and so I'm going to get a broad signal right for this for this OH bond. So let me go ahead and highlight it here. So I would I might expect, right, since I have hydrogen bonding that weakens that weakens this OH bond. Right? And so I might, I might get another broad signal for my OH. But in this case, we have so much steric hindrance from these tert-butyl groups, right? So there's tons of steric hindrance here. And then we have these big ones over here too. And that's going to prevent the hydrogen bonding from taking place. And so because of steric hindrance, these molecules can't get close enough to each other for hydrogen bonding to occur. So we don't get any hydrogen bonding. All right? If we go over here to the IR spectrum for BHT, Right? As usual, it helps to draw it helps to draw a line around 3,000 or so. And then we don't see this broad signal, right? So this broad signal up here is missing down here. But what we do have is we have a sharp signal. So let me go ahead and highlight that here. So we have a sharp 
signal right about let's drop down and see where we are for a wave number so this would be 31 32 33 34 35 36 and so somewhere somewhere around 3600 we see this sharp signal and this is that OH bond right so this is that OH bond and we don't see a broad uh, we don't see a broad signal because we don't have hydrogen bonding to worry about and so we don't see that broad shape we see a sharp signal for the OH so this is this allows you to uh, to think about where you would find this signal here right so if you have a if you have oxygen hydrogen bond with no hydrogen bonding you expect to see it around 3600 if you have an oxygen hydrogen bond stretch and there and there is hydrogen bonding look for this look for this broad signal here over this large area all right let's do one more let's do one more molecule where we're thinking about hydrogen bonding and this time we're talking about a carboxylic acid all right so here's our carboxylic acid over here and let's analyze uh, the IR spectrum for this carboxylic acid. All right, so we see we see this OH here. Right? We see this OH, and so we think to ourselves, ah, hydrogen bonding can occur. So where would that signal be? And before I said it would be somewhere around you know 3,500 to 2,900, somewhere in that range. And so if we if we look. We look, we see an even broader signal here, right? So an even broader signal, a little bit even broader than the range we talked about before. And that's because carboxylic acids have more hydrogen bonding, right? So if I go down here, let me show you, right, here's some hydrogen bonding for a carboxylic acid, right? So we have an opportunity for a hydrogen bond here. And we have an opportunity for hydrogen bonding here as well. So a, a large amount of hydrogen bonding makes the signal even broader when you're talking about the OH on a carboxylic acid. And so this, this very broad signal is talking about, is talking about this oxygen-hydrogen bond stretch. And once again, if we draw a line at 3,000, right? So we draw a line right here. We can see this little uh, this little signal right in here, and that's actually the carbon-hydrogen. Uh, stretch where the carbon we're talking about sp3 hybridized carbon here so the, uh, the the broad the broad signal is often centered around around 3000 and so that partially obscures that carbon hydrogen bond stretch that we've talked about before and so there's another hint that you're talking about a carboxylic acid but of course the biggest hint is when you also see the very strong signal for the carbonyl occurring somewhere around 1700 so let's go ahead and identify that right so we draw a line right here and then in the double bond region right we see this really intense signal right here a, approximately around 1700 so usually uh, usually I think it's a tiny bit higher than that but this is this is due to our carbon our carbon oxygen double bond stretch right so we're talking about our carbonyl here so what if you see this really broad signal right which tells you which tells you OH and then this this really strong signal which tells you carbonyl right put an OH and a carbonyl together and you get a carboxylic acid and so it's pretty easy to identify a carboxylic acid using an IR spectrum here and just a quick note about hydrogen bonding right we talked about hydrogen bonding weakening a carbon oxygen bond above a similar thing happens here so let me go ahead and highlight that right so we have if we have hydrogen bonding right in here right that's going to weaken our carbonyl so it's going to decrease the double bond character a little bit and so that's actually going to uh, going to change where we find the signal so it actually actually changes the signal if it's if it's weakening the bond a little bit right so if you're going to decrease the wave number and so this carbonyl is a tiny bit lower uh, in terms of wave number where you find the signal than what you would expect and I'll briefly mention that in in a later video when we talk about carbonyl chemistry and, and more about IR spectra so for the shape of the signal remember broad think think hydrogen bonding if it's a broad signal